What is up guys? We're back with another video and today we're checking out this big CPU cooler right here. This is the Cooler Master Master Air MA824 Stealth. So let's go ahead and take a look. As we take a first look at the cooler with the front fan installed, this is definitely one of the largest air coolers that we've ever reviewed. I'll go ahead and put the official dimensions, you know, like I always do right here. And the one metric to look at is that 165.6 millimeters tall. A lot of cases will only support up to 155 millimeters. So that's something you definitely want to keep in mind. If we start at the front of the cooler, we have our first fan, which is Cooler Master's own 120 millimeter Mobius PWM fan. This fan will spin up to 1950 RPM with a max airflow of 63.1 CFM, max air pressure of 2.69 and max noise level of 22.6 dBA. The fan actually features blue fan blades and upon closer inspection, we can see that these blades are actually connected by an outer rim. Cooler Master calls this their ring blade design, and we've seen this type of design on graphics cards before. Looking at the cooler from the side, we can see it's dual tower, dual fan design. The two larger heatsink towers are made up of 41 aluminum fins each, with the front tower being slightly cut off towards the front to make sure you don't run into any issues with memory clearance. At the center of the two heatsink towers is your second fan, which is a 135 millimeter Mobius fan. This fan will spin up to 1550 RPM with a max airflow of 63.6 CFM, max air pressure of 1.92, and a max noise level of 24.6 dBA. Both the center fan and front fan are rated for 200,000 hours. At the top of the cooler, we have a top cap that has a nice brushed metal look to it with the Cooler Master logo in the center. You'll notice two screws on the top. You'll use these to install a cooler without having to remove the center fan, but more on that in a bit. Moving around to the back of the cooler, we can get a better look at the heatsink tower and how the actual heat pipes go up into it. There are eight heat pipes that come up from the base of the cooler and go up into each heatsink tower in a U fashion. These superconductive composite heat pipes are designed in-house by Cooler Master and utilize a groove and powder wick structure with variable thickness for maximum efficiency in heat transfer. The base of the cooler is made of nickel plated copper and we can see that Cooler Master has pre-applied thermal paste here. For a high-end cooler, I'm not exactly sure I'm a fan of this. Installation of this cooler is actually pretty easy even though it is pretty big. Cooler Master does include instructions and they are really easy to follow. Now we're going to be doing our installation here on an Intel Z490 system. So this installation should be pretty much the same across all modern Intel sockets. The first thing that you're going to want to do is find the Intel backplate and attach it through the backside of your motherboard, lining up the pegs with the holes in your motherboard. Then go ahead and take the Intel spacing screws and screw them into the pegs in the backplate. This will secure the backplate to your motherboard. Now go ahead and install the Intel mounting bars, securing them in place with the included thumb screws. These bars need to be installed on the sides of the socket, as you can see here. Carefully place the cooler on top of your CPU, lining up the screws in the center of the cooler with the holes in the mounting bars. Using the included screwdriver, tighten the screws from the top of the cooler to secure it. Finally, connect the fans to the included Y adapter and then plug that Y adapter into the CPU fan header on your motherboard. With the cooler installed, we can see it does take up a considerable amount of space, completely covering our memory. When it comes to testing, we test both temperatures as well as sound levels. So here's a full breakdown of our test system. As we come down to the end here, I was actually really intrigued to see how this cooler would perform when I first got it in. For about the past two years, the best performing air cooler in our test group has always been Cooler Master's own MA624 Stealth. So here we have the MA824 Stealth, and I have to say that I was pleasantly surprised that it won. 
it was better performing overall. So just in raw performance, this cooler is definitely better than its predecessor. But on top of that, it's quieter as well. So they basically made a better performing cooler that's quieter. And I would have to say it's easier to install as well. You know, this is a massive air cooler, but the installation was incredibly easy. And I know we do all of our installations, you know, outside of the case so we can show you. But I would say that you could easily install this cooler with your motherboard mounted in the case. And a lot of massive air coolers, you just can't say that. So it's really cool that you have that, you know, have that here. And then on top of that, like I said, it is very quiet as well. Again, for a massive air cooler, those Mobius fans are very quiet, which I definitely like. The only downside to this cooler, I would say, is that it is big and that it is going to take up a lot of space and it's going to completely cover your memory. So if you do have RGB memory, it's going to be, you know, covered up by this cooler. But at the end of the day, I really like this cooler. I think if you are looking for a high performance air cooler, this should definitely be on your list. It's currently selling for about $100, which I think is kind of like the going price for the high end air coolers out there. But if you are looking for an air cooler, like I said, this is one that I would definitely recommend. Now I will have links below where you can go ahead and pick this up as well as to our full written review here on thinkcomputers.org. Now, if you enjoyed this video, I would appreciate it if you hit the thumbs up. We'll see you guys in the next video.